everyone, and welcome to this month's segment of your Daily Five. Thanks to Stock Charts TV and the team. This is Mish Schneider, Chief Strategist for MarketGage.com. And the market is so interesting. And so as we're kind of going into a test of some of the lower support regions, we really have to wonder what is going to happen from here, right? And so probably the biggest thing that we have going for the market right now was that the small caps got right up to a 23 month moving average at around 1900, backed off. And of course the SPY cleared the 440 at the time. Um, and 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 But that really wasn't necessarily what we were focused on. We were focused on what Russell's did. And furthermore, what the grandma retail sector did, and that would be measured through XRT. And uh, actually, I can show you that chart real quick uh, when I get through this little conversation and then what else we're going to cover today. But the amazing thing about XRT is the consumer with all the bad news of inflation still a factor, the Fed possibly having to become more hawkish, lots and lots of talk about a crash because of commercial real estate and on and on the doomsday people the consumer area has been much weaker of course than everywhere else but nonetheless holding some critical support so in addition to that really what i want to discuss is where would i have skin in the game right now uh, and remember of course this is for educational purposes not necessarily recommendations to buy but certainly stocks to consider and the ones that we're going to cover today include formula one the long bonds Teva Pharmaceuticals, the Cannabis ETF, Kroger, Cleveland Cliff Mines, and Silver. So you can see there's sort of a cross section of areas that I'd like to look at. So now let's get to the charts. So I said I was going to start with uh, XRT. I just think the chart is super interesting um, because here we are above the 50. We haven't been able to clear above the 200. And of course, uh, if I switch to a monthly chart, you would see the 23 month moving averages all the way up here while we had cleared it in the S&P and in NASDAQ and also even in transportation, although we're threading it right now. So I think this is a real big swing trade here, if we had to call it like the swing vote. If this breaks down under the 50 and continues to break down under 60, and then of course works its way back to the lows that we saw in early June, I would not be very optimistic for the market as we're going into the second half. On the flip side though, if it miraculously holds and get back through this 200, I'm not necessarily saying it'll go up and clear the 23 month, but it is possible that a rally that would call it, catch the bears off guard once again again, would ensue and maybe a move up closer to 67. So just watch this because I think it's really key, probably more than any other sector, maybe even more than regional banks that are also under pressure again. So let's go through some of these areas of of stocks that I am watching. Uh, and again, more for educational purposes, but Formula One, I know it's not NAS, uh, NASCAR racing, but it has continued to gain in popularity, has a lot of celebrity backing. That's from a fundamental side, actually going to have a, a race in Las Vegas, Nevada come November. So there's a lot of buzz around this. Uh, and I think I mean, mean that metaphorically and literally, but you can see that it made a nice little top peak here. And, and with the market has come off a little bit, as I'm talking to you actually on Friday, the 23rd, June, it's holding and it's holding these, these recent breakout levels. So I like that. I like to see this hold around 67.80 to 68. And if the market does go positive, this would be one I think that has a lot more upside. On the real motion indicator, we did get a mean reversion. That's when these red dots on our momentum indicator go above the Bollinger and then break down below it. However, it is very much in alignment with what we're seeing here in price. So the momentum, there's no divergence at this particular point. Of course, what we would like to see, and it hasn't happened in a while, we go all the way back. This has not been about the Bollinger Band since the beginning of the year. And we tested it here in March before the banking decline. So if we can get back over there and start to make our way to new highs, we're talking about a move to new highs because it's never been in this level before. That's a momentum stock. 
Now, the others are not necessarily momentum stocks, but certainly interesting. The long bonds, you know, whether you want to trade them or whether you just want to use them as some kind of guide. What's so interesting is after we had this exhaustion gap bottom here in March and we started to break down again here in May, we never actually filled the gap or tested this exhaustion gap low. That gives you a hundred as a really good strong base. And of course, what we're seeing here Friday is a clearance of both the 50 and the 200. We've done it before and then we haven't been able to maintain it. But looking at the real motion indicator, we actually have a bullish divergence here in that A, the 50 is well above the 200, so it's in a bullish phase where this is actually tackling more of a bearish phase with the 50 looking like it's going to break below. And number two is we're actually above the 50-day moving average, just sitting there under the zero line. And this is another one where we really have not cleared Bollinger Bands on the top for a while. So if this can hold, I think you you can look at 102 as the first swing area, but really from a longer term perspective, like I'm saying about 100. And if we continue to hold above these moving averages as we go into next week, I'd say 105 would be your next area to be looking at. And of course, this thing has stopped in its tracks. More importantly is what is the implication? You want to look at what the long bonds are doing against the junk bonds right now they're outperforming and you want to see what the long bonds are doing relative to the spy because if the long bonds continue to outperform the spy then what that really tells you here is that money is going into bonds probably more as a safety play yields are going down probably good for metals. We'll talk about that later. And thirdly, that may be the talk of recession happening at some point or at least more stagnation in terms of the stagflation is seems more inevitable. So the next one we're going to go into pharmaceuticals. And I, you know, I'm just like really watching this whole area of IBB carefully. It's been so stuck in a range. But there's one particular stock that's interesting to me, although the setup is not classic in that we're still below the 50 and we're still below the 200. And this is an Israeli pharmaceutical company. There's a lot of talk about shortages of different types of drugs for cancer, vaccines for children. This is a company that makes basically generic drugs. And so what I like about it is that it looks to me like it's kind of bottom tier. I mean, really, basically, it has not been below seven or even 710. I like when you see that kind of bottoming action. This is kind of what we saw in Palantir, right? I mean, it bottomed out at around seven, eight for a long time, and then boom, took that recent trip and of course is selling off now, but you had a nice opportunity to lock in money and that could happen with this. We did have a mean reversion here. Obviously you can see the Bollinger Bands are uh, wide apart, so we're not so worried about a top here, but this is closer to the 50 day moving average than the price is. And of course, if we can get through momentum wise through the 50, then we would have a positive bullish divergence. But also if we take a look at this chart and we go back, once we broke down, and this of course was in May, underneath like 790 to eight, which is right where the 50 is, that's really where we've had some issues and just gone sideways. So watch for that. Watch for, first of all, to hold around these levels, watch for the momentum on our ACP plugin, and then of course, watch to see if we can get above the 50. Okay, the next stock is more something I, <laughs> I've gotten a lot of pushback on talking about this, of course, which I like when I get pushback because generally it means everybody's given up on it and that's when I get interested. But this is the classic bullish divergence between the momentum indicator on real motion and the chart in terms of the price. We have gotten through not only the Bollinger Band here, we're sitting right on it. There was some bad news about uh, a couple of stocks, uh, cannabis stocks in Canada, but this is US. Uh, and right now we are kind of above where we needed to be here in momentum. Look at how the 50 looks like it's going to take out the 200. This might go into an actual bullish phase in momentum. If it holds above this Bollinger Band, that would be great. Obviously, if we have a, a negative divergence or a mean reversion, that would be something else. But if it doesn't happen, and we can start to see this continue to hold up above the price, we have not been below five. It is possible that could be a sleeper trade with a huge short float. 
Would I marry this thing? No. But is there talk of possible legislation changing? Of course, there's always talk, but we'll see what happens. The next one is Kroger. And Kroger is only interesting to me insofar as that you had a nice reversal bottom here. We've been consolidating. And as I'm talking to you, it's starting to clear above the 200. However, I'm not really seeing anything too exciting. We do have a bullish diversion in momentum in that this has been above the 200 for a while, where this is just creeping above after a couple of days here. We have to get through the zero line and we have to get through the 50 here. But this is another one that if we do, at least maybe we could take a trip up to around 50. This thing has not gotten through 50. So even if you wanted to take a nibble, let's say, with a pretty low risk under 45, that's one thing. But if you wanted to wait and just keep this on your radar on set alert through 50, Kroger could get interesting. The next one is more in the metal space, more of a basic material, industrial metal, and that would be Cleveland Cliffs. They make steel. And we know home builders have done very, very well. But this interests me for a couple of reasons. Number one is it did have a nice bottom right? Here's a classic bottom. And then it gapped up after that. So you had buying coming in. We got through the 200, but we could not confirm. So now here we are testing the 50. So a very clear tight risk here too. In the momentum indicators, the 50 is above the 200. So we had a bullish divergence uh, for a while, actually really back since here. So with a bullish divergent momentum, but price doing sort of eh, at this point now, what we need to see is this to clear hold around this 1550. Next time it gets through the 1670 to 17 level, uh, I think this could have a nice move up, probably back up to around 22 and a half. And there's a lot of reasons why uh, steel might be an interesting play, particularly if the manufacturing money that's going into this country and uh, also any kind of home building continues and we don't go into a mass recession, um, then this could be uh, a, a very undervalued stock. The last one is going for, now when I'm showing you futures, I'm just showing you the ETF of silver, but I love when people start to give up on the metals because classically, every time people have given up on the metals, is when this thing has rallied. Same thing with gold, by the way. This was back in March when it had the mean reversion, right when it made a new low and it had an incredible move. And now since then, we have declined, but we're sitting right on the 200 day moving average. We're below it here. So we have a negative divergence in momentum. But it is possible that either we've held now the Bollinger Band and we start to move up and the way I would determine that would be, first of all, I'd want to see momentum improve here around these Bollinger Bands, number one. And then after a couple of days of testing this 200-day moving average, I would like to see this take a little bit more, maybe a move over 2080, which, by the way, looking at today's high is 2083, maybe that would be, for me, a very low-risk trade uh, opportunity to say that with the yields falling, I mean, the dollar has gotten stronger again um, because of all the interest rates raises in Europe and, uh, and obviously some recession fears. But nonetheless, if the dollar loosely tied, if that comes off and this takes through 2080, it could be good for silver and it could be good for gold. So that's a lot of information to give you in a short period of time. I hope you enjoyed it and found uh, the uh, information uh, educational and also actionable. And I will see you all again real soon. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.